Welcome back, this is part 5 of the car AI series. In this part we're going to control the rotation of our wheels. Also we're going to add some stability to our car. This won't be a long part, but it will have some nice improvements. Let's get started. So in the last part we've seen that our car is working. Only the wheels are static. They're not spinning or turning, we have to do this by ourselves. The way we're going to do this is to apply a script to every wheel that will mimic the movements of the wheel collider. So first, let's delete all those cars, besides one, so we only have one to work with. Then we're going to make a new script. New C-sharp script and we call this car wheel. Let's put it in a scripts folder and open it up. The first thing we're going to do is to make a new variable and this will be a public wheel collider and we call this target wheel let's first save the script and then apply this script to all of our wheels so go back to unity select all of your wheels and then only the meshes not the wheel colliders but the mesh itself and then drag your car wheel script onto it now also open up your colliders and for each wheel you have to drag the corresponding collider into the script so wheel RL should have the wheel RL collider. Do this for every wheel. So now the script knows what collider it needs to listen to. Then we're going to do a very easy trick. I learned this trick from Armo03. He said to me that there was a very easy way of doing this. So I'm going to show it now. We can remove the start function because we don't need it. And now we're going to make two private variables. The first one will be a private vector 3 and we call this wheel position. And we create a new vector 3 for this, just as default. And we also need a private quaternion, so actually a rotation. And we call this wheel rotation. And we also default this as a new quaternion. Now in the update function we want to get the rotation and the position of our wheel colliders. Because they are creating the physics. So we can just ask for the rotation and the position of the colliders. And then apply that position and rotation to our wheel mesh. So in the update function we write target wheel dot get world pose. Not pause, but pose. In the brackets, we can say our out. And this is the same as our raycast. Then we have also an out, which is the raycast hit. And uh, this function stores the output of the function in your variable that you put behind this. So in this case, our out will first be our wheel position. And then, as you can see here, we first select our output variable for the position and then our output variable for the quaternion. So the second one will be our out wheel rotation. So if you execute this function it will return some variables and the variables are stored within this variable and also for this one in this variable. So now we can use this variable because it's updated after this function. So now we can say our transform.position, so the transform position of this wheel, equals our wheel position. Also do this for the rotation, so transform.rotation equals our wheel rotation. This is a very small script, so let's save it and let's see if this is working. Let's select our wheels and double tap F to focus. And as you can see, the spring is working, the rotation of the front wheels is working and also the spinning of the wheels is working. So this little piece of code just made everything working. Then another thing we want to do is to stabilize the car even more. We can do this by using the rigid body center of mass. Normally it's defaulted at the center of the object. So the heaviest point that is calculated of the physics is at the center of your object. But for our car, it's better to have the center of mass at the bottom of the car, so it doesn't flip that quickly, and it's more stable. 
select your car and open up your car engine. We create a new variable for this and this will be a public vector 3 and let's call this center of mass. Also we need to apply this to our rigid body and the rigid body is at our car so we can just get the component. So in the start function we say get component type of rigid body and from this component we will set the center of mass to our variable the center of mass. So now instead of the normal position, the 0, 0, 0, we can set our own vector 3. Save the script and when we go back to Unity, we can see our variable here. And normally it's at the center and we want to lower it, so, so we go negative on the y axis. I figured out for my car it's uh, the best to have minus 0 0.2, but for your car it's uh, depending on the size of the car. So you can uh, mess around with this a bit. So let's test it out. And as you can see we have a very good car here. So that's it for this episode. I want to thank armo 3 for letting me know that this function exists. Because it makes it very easy for you also. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next part.